League of Legends champion releases have always been something that's so uniquely hit or miss. I mean, there's over 140 champions in this game, so we can't expect them all to be bangers, but it is safe to say that Riot has its share of favorites. Sometimes Riot puts their heart and soul in building hype for a character, giving them animated trailers, easter eggs, cereal boxes, and whatever else to moisten our appetites. Moisten. But then other times, champions just show up like a distant cousin at your birthday party. I mean, you didn't ask for it, but cool. I guess. The idea of favorites kind of sucks because sure, if you fall in love with one of Riot's trophy children, you'll be showered in content forever. But if you fall in love with anyone else, you better smile when Riot gives you a skin every four years because that's all you're gonna get. Calling Seraphine Riot's favorite champion is kind of an understatement. In fact, calling League of Legends anything other than what it actually is feels insulting. Seraphine is the most important character in KDA Legends. Not only did she come out with a $25 ultimate skin on release, she's had a dedicated Twitter page, an Instagram, a Weibo, a SoundCloud, a Spotify, and God knows whatever else four months before she was even declared a champion. And before we even get into her kit, her uncanny marketing, or just her overall issues, I think it's fair to say that we need to know a little bit about the lore. So I brought in a very special guest to explain to us who Seraphine even is. Take it from here, Nicky Boy. Hello, hello. I, I'm Nicky Boy, professional Ivern mid main, slightly below average video editor, and all around a fucking idiot. Today I've been brought in by my man Scooch to tell you about the amazing, absolutely disastrous fuck fest, also known as Seraphine's Lore. <laughs> Get ready, fellas, it's gonna be a fucking doozy. Seraphine grew up in the streets of Zaun, burdened with incredible hearing. Her hearing was so good, in fact, that she could hear other people's souls in the form of a song for some reason. Over time, the songs became so overwhelming that her family had to move to Piltover and purchase an ever so valuable Hextech crystal. Thanks to its amazing powers, it was able to dampen Seraphine's hearing, but at a cost. She heard a voice crying out for help from inside the crystal. The voice in question was that of the ancient Brackern race, aka Skarner's people. Now this is an important detail because these hex crystals function sort of like an organ for the Brackern. When a Brackern dies, its soul is transferred into the crystal, and then is passed on to the next generation. So one of these crystals could potentially contain thousands if not millions of Brackern souls. And keep in mind, these guys are a peaceful race. So peaceful in fact that they buried themselves underground for centuries to avoid any and all conflict. And then, you know, the Piltovans came along and, um... <coughs> Uh, murdered them all and used them as batteries to power their technology. Sorry, Jimmy, but your microwave is powered by the souls of the dead. Keep in mind, nobody knows that the crystals contain conscious souls in pain, but Seraphine does. And because she's portrayed in her story as a kind, empathetic person looking to unite all people, you would think she would try to get the word out that their city was powered by souls, right? To help free the Brackern, right? No! She makes a hoverboard out of hers and becomes a pop star for some reason. Kind of like they had no choice but to make her a singer or something. Now that she's a pop star, she can go about her journey to save Piltover and Zan. Through the power of music, she will unite all people so that everyone can be happy. Get back in your boombox, you fucking battery! Her lore caused such an uproar in fact that they had to rework it. Released for less than a few days and already getting a rework. That's gotta be a new record. <laughs> in her reworked lore, they removed the Brackern aspect entirely. Now she only knows that there's a voice coming from the Hex Crystal but can't really understand it. So I guess it's fine now, right? I mean, this was the plan all along, that her knowing the crystals were conscious beings and doing nothing about it was just a slip in the writing, right? Right? The Brackern fuel our city, our future. All I can do is sing their elegy. All you could do is free the sentient souls you turn into your fucking segue, you goddamn piece of shit. Seraphine is almost the worst thing Riot will ever do, and the only reason I say almost is because I live my life with a cautious pessimism. She is a baseless, money-hungry demon with more lore written about her than any other character, but less personality in-game than a goddamn caster minion. Not to roast you, little guy, I do think that you are kind of cool. She has no unique gimmick anywhere, and it's pretty obvious that Riot came up with her design before thinking of anything else. In fact, she only has two abilities that make sense for her being a singer, but her passives are pretty game-changing, so we're gonna dive into those now. 
But before we get into the skills, I just wanted to let you guys know that the majority of the people watching this video aren't subscribed to the channel. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll really help me out. I do my best to put out content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I put my heart and soul into every single one of these videos, so subscribing is the best thing you could do to support the channel. All right, I love you. Please subscribe. If you do, I love you. If you don't, I still love you, but please do. Let's keep going. Her first passive is called Echo. Every third basic ability that Seraphine uses will happen twice, at no additional cost. That's right. That bitch will just happen again. Which would be a pretty cool passive on a character that has to do with, I don't know, time manipulation? But no, let's give it to the fucking singer. Her second passive is called Harmony. Seraphine's abilities grant a note to her and all allied champions nearby. Seraphine's next basic attack while notes are active will give her bonus range and deal extra damage based on the amount of notes. Basically, the more she uses abilities near allied champions, the more her next basic attack is going to hurt. So be careful and pay attention. Just because you can see sharp doesn't mean that Seraphine won't make that ass be flat. It's a music joke. Seraphine's cue is to lob singing in a target direction, dealing AoE damage in the area and expanding from the center. The damage is increased based on missing health, so it can be a pretty good execute and wave clear if it is echoed with her passive. But again, this has absolutely nothing to do with singing. What the hell can a musical artist throw to hurt you? It back? Seraphine's W is exactly what I hate about the character. It is a massive, unmissable AoE shield that grants move speed. If echoed, or if she has a shield on her when she uses it, it will also heal you based on missing health. This move is called Surround Sound, but it should be called, no, Heart. Because you may think you got a good engage or catch on Seraphine's team, but no, you didn't. This is also one of the two abilities in her kit that makes sense as a singer. Because she inspires them by singing a song, I guess. But what the fuck can she be saying that makes them take all that damage? Her E is a skill shot in a target direction that deals damage to all enemies hit and slows them for 99% for one second. If the enemy is already slowed or immobilized, they end up getting stunned instead. Meaning if you echo this ability, Seraphine now has a 1300 unit skill shot slow stun every 9 seconds without CD. It's good to chain on other CC and has the potential to make some pretty huge catches. If you echo this ability, sure you'll have a stun by yourself, but it's a lot more effective to just chain it on top of someone else's CC. Seraphine's ultimate is a big ass skill shot that charms everyone hit by it for up to 1.75 seconds. It also reveals enemy chances champions and slows them for up to 99% in its duration. Every single time this ability hits a champion, its range is reset, meaning it can go pretty far and charm everything in its wake. Pairing this with her E makes her E a stun if you can land the ultimate raw, and actually gives Seraphine a bit of depth because if you can land your ultimate and then E after and then Echo Q, you can get your maximum damage, but it does take some practice. This ability also makes sense as a singer, I guess, because she's mesmerizing everyone with her Chinese rendition of WAP. By the way, Seraphine is Chinese. I don't know if you knew that, but she is. Not that it fucking matters because she lives in Rune Terra where there is no China, but I digress. She's not a champion at all. You can look at any other character in this game and basically see the lore oozing off of their body, but Seraphine looks like a self-insert pop star character that was made solely to sell skins. She is a singer flying around on a hover stage powered by Skarner's dead fucking mom in a place where religious activists, pirates, ninjas, and ghosts are all trying to kill each other. I'm so tired of talking about her, but there isn't a single redeeming thing here. Ari is a murderous fox demon that kills people after she charms them in with her magic. So they gave her a pop star skin. Cool, that's a great concept for that character. Seraphine is a fucking pop star, so they gave her a fucking $25 pop star skin. Why? It's the same fucking thing. It's like when they gave Draven Draven Draven. 
Except at least that one was funny, and it didn't cost $25. No matter which way you slice it, Seraphine is a product that doesn't fit in League of Legends. It genuinely feels like Tencent showed up one day and went, uh, yeah, no, we want a Chinese pop star because we know personally that it'll make billions of dollars. So, uh, here's a picture that my daughter drew this morning during breakfast. Uh, just, just work with it, okay? You guys, just, just, just do something. I'm so goddamn tired of talking about her, and I know that I have milked her for every single view I can. Because ironically, Seraphine being such a sellout, overpriced concept was quite literally the freest content. However, I will say that if you guys want to see a much smarter, more defined, and better edited point of view, I will direct you guys to Nikki Boy's video, which I will put as the annotation at the end of this one or at the top of the description. It's probably the best Seraphine video I've ever seen and you guys should really check it out because it talks about stuff that I'm never gonna talk about because I'm done with this one And I think it's a lot of very interesting points that we're never gonna be able to get to here So go check that out I'm glad we can finally close this chapter and after this video I'm probably never gonna mention her again because she is an ode to capitalism with less soul than a pair of worn-out chucks Okay, that's the whole video click on the click on the video on the screen which should be Nikki boys video It's probably Probably gonna be Nikki Boy's video on the left, and then probably a random video of mine on the right. And if I somehow fuck this up, right, because I do sometimes, then go to the top of the description, it'll be right there. Alright, check out his video and go show him some love. Come on, go show Nikki Boy some love. I told you guys I'm gonna try to work with smaller YouTube creators, and he's one of them, and he definitely deserves a lot more subscribers. So go give him a kiss on the forehead for me, alright? Okay, cool. Thank you guys for watching. I know I missed Monday's video this week that is completely on me and I apologize for it but sometimes I gotta simply vibe you know sometimes I gotta vibe